Hello and welcome back to another game review. My name is Saiken and today we're going to answer the question Aliens Dark Descent, is it worth it? I'm doing game reviews on the regular from games that I've played and completed. This is no exception. And word of advice before we jump into it, I'm not a modern game reviewer who gives every single game a 9 or 10 out of 10. I instead focus on a normal distribution of games, the vast majority of which are 5 out of 10s. Some good games, very good games are 7 out of 10s, exceptional games 8 out of 10s, once a year kind of games 9 out of 10s and genre defining games would be 10 out of 10s. So where does the Alien Dark Descent game fall onto this scale? Before we jump into the actual review, let's take a look at the plot of the game, which focuses around a planet named Lefi that is a mining colony in a remote sector. The protagonist, who oversees the local space station, and a couple of marines are being forced to try to fight against the impeding doom of an alien infestation of that planet. Unfortunately, things are not going their way, and with a sweet, sweet mixture of corporate espionage, a fanatic cult of Xeno lovers, as well as relentless aliens, a story uh, unlike no other unfolds that could rival that of a film. However, does the game itself hold up to the hype, and does it uh, find the right tone for the alien universe? For starters, let's jump into the lore and the background of the game. Franchise games in particular do have a hard time with that, since lore and background are oftentimes deep and finding the right tone and admiring to the source material isn't always easy. Aliens Dark Descent, however, does a wonderful job in doing exactly that. It finds the right balance of being lore conformative with most of the weapons, the technology, the look and feel, the grittiness and uh, the aliens as well as the marines just looking and feeling like the ones of Aliens 2 and Aliens 3, uh, referring to the movies in this particular case, whilst also adding lore-friendly additions uh, to the mix, uh, such as a couple of new weapons or a bit extended uh, weaponry, as well as some stronger aliens. None of that sounds uh, forced or feels like it is out of place, quite the contrary. With regular cutscenes, deep dialogues, well-written uh, stories, a good uh, subverting of expectations, reasonable motives of protagonists and antagonists, the game does a phenomenal job in telling a good story that could rival that of a well-budgeted film. It certainly also helps that each of the characters and their motivation seems authentic and that the storyline has the right pacing. None of it feels artificial. None of it feels like hunting a MacGuffin. Most of it serves a certain purpose. And whilst all of the interactions might come from different angles, each of the characters has a very plausible motive for what they're doing. So I was really pleased to see that. And I would say in terms of just pure storyline, the game is up there with the mass effects, just an awesome storyline to follow through that is very, very lore friendly. Which brings us neatly to the next point, the graphic and the graphical user interface. So this is a mixed bag for the game. The game overall is good in that regard, but I wouldn't say anything past good, not exceptional and certainly not genre defining. The graphic itself is modern-ish, although not new state of the art. 3D uh, polygons, solid textures on the highest uh, texture and environmental rate. It uses most of the graphic card built in features of DirectX 10, such as the shading or the environmental and illuminating effects. So all of that is good. The ambient that it creates is well done. However, there are a couple of shortcomings. Let's start with the graphic itself. The Marines themselves look all quite bland, and that is putting it nicely. The character depth and customization isn't on par with other modern games, and quite frankly, the artwork isn't very well done. 
but that might be in the eye of the beholder. Secondly, and even worse from my perspective, are the shortcomings of the graphical user interface. Whilst uh, the graphical user interface itself is okay for combat game, uh, very vital information are oftentimes hidden or somewhere at the edge of uh, the screen so that it really doesn't port uh, portray a clear message immediately. Um, also, not all of the information is always fully available. Clicks aren't being received uh, from time to time, which leads to the frustrating situation where you want to do something in the game and the game just doesn't fully react to it. Finally, for a squad-based game like uh, Alien Dark Descent, the decision of making all four members a single unit, a cohesive unit, might be fine from a real-time strategy perspective, but the design decision of making it a syndicate-like game, whereas you can only stop or slow down the combat, and uh, essentially making it a real-time combat with a cohesion of four marines or five marines later in the game that are one unit really doesn't do the game a lot of service. Oftentimes I found myself displaced because one of the marines that I needed for a, a certain special attack wasn't available or wasn't rightly positioned. Um, on top of that, the marines from time to time were just simply not following orders and commands so long you couldn't interrupt some of them and sometimes the inputs were just laggy. So overall, not the best experience and I am someone who likes just very crisp input in the games. Hence, 7 out of 10 instead of the full point. Which nicely brings us to sound and FX. The sound and FX are very well done in the game, even a little bit better than very well done. It is a triple A title norm. All of the dialogues are fully voiced. The sound effects of the guns and the environment are fine. Appreciate them a lot. The interaction of the characters is meaningful and the synchron artists have been chosen very well. All of the voices resemble the characters very well. However, there are a couple of shortcomings that I found uh, disheartening, such as the lack of depth of sound samples. For instance, whenever you're moving your Marines, it will just play one out of three samples. And after you hear move on you slugs or do you want to do a picnic, the 15th time it stops being fun and starts being actually annoying. The other uh, problem with that is that real banter and kind of organic interaction that you would see in a game like Jagged Alliance 3, which came out uh, recently, uh, will simply outshine uh, Alien Dark Descent despite all of uh, the attempts. I was torn between giving it a 7 or an 8. I think given that it hits uh, the gritty dark environment very well and the sound itself is actually quite good, I was more torn towards an 8. Uh, but you could equally say it's a 7 out of 10, somewhere in between. Which neatly brings me to the main section of the review of this game, which is the tactical gameplay or the gameplay in general. In order to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make, you are currently watching the official launch trailer of the game. The game is known or wants to be known as a real-time strategy game slash a squad-based tactical game. Even the official trailer says so which uh, the game wants to turn into kind of an action-paced, really engaging interaction against the aliens with a deep uh, squads mentality, as well as a character progression. And whilst the game has implemented that, I think the uh, game fell very much short on that particular case. I want to be precise in what I'm trying to say here, so I'll give you an example of what I mean. The game has an overall arsenal of 25 weapons and interaction items, out of which three are relevant for the uh, majority of the game, whilst the other 22 are not. So, what do I mean with that? I measured within the game that you are spending more than 95% of uh, the game not doing what the game is actually proposing uh, to be. Which means 
the tactical combat aspect of the game makes up for anywhere between three and five percent and if you wonder why cycling would you even measure that well it's pretty easy the game even tells you after each mission how much percent of the game you were actually fighting and seen by the hive and how often you were out of sight and were stealthing and the lowest that I've ever gotten in terms of stealth was 93%, the highest was 97%. So take it for what it is, the vast majority of uh, the time you will not fight the enemies, but you will instead try to do everything in your power to not fight the enemy. This game is potentially more a roguelike squad based game, which is a very weird gaming concept. And it really ends up being a jack of all trades master of none because it tries so hard to include too many things. And instead of making the campaign kind of a flip flop between stealthy parts where you do have non combatants and then actual fighting parts, the game instead tries very much to uh, introduce a mechanic whereas for every deployment that you're having you can fight only so far and the moment that the swarm becomes overwhelming you need to retreat now here in lies a bit of a problem let me elaborate if you advertise your game to be a squad based tactical fighting game and then you're doing that in only five percent of uh, the time then there is a huge mismatch between expectation and reality. And don't get me wrong, the tactical squad fight is actually well done. You do have command points that you can use in order to perform tactical maneuvers, such as shooting a grenade, using a shotgun for extra damage, using a flamethrower, or even later in the game, using a grenade launcher. All of that is great and is good fun, but unfortunately that fun lasts a few seconds and then you are back to stealth. So you wonder why exactly would you not want to fight? Well, great question, Invisible Strawman that asks the uh, pleasant questions in my review. Now, you don't want to fight because there are actually four uh, methods that are completely stacked against you and all four of these methods or four of these systems are actively discouraging you to take fights. For starters, your marines have hit points, as you can see with the green hit point bars. You're losing them in combats and make no mistake, even if you are tactically very versed, the aliens will find around uh, ways of your defense and therefore will start to attack you. You can heal up your hit points with health slash medipacks, but that is a limited resource and at some point you're running out, hence you cannot continue fighting. Number two, you do have ammunition, which again is a very limited resource in this game. At some point, the ammo will be consumed and you will need to switch to secondary weapons, which are frankly speaking suboptimal to say the least. Number three is a stress system that is on top of that, whereas the Marines, whenever they see aliens and actively fight against them, uh, become stressed out. If you don't cure stress, which you need to do with, you guessed it, a limited resource, you will end up with trauma points and then later a severe, uh, uh, severe traumas and even full-fledged stress which will put you into quasi-like coma where you then need uh, weeks and weeks to recover. So stress is typically a bad thing and you want uh, to prevent it from happening and on, on top of all of that the game has a hive aggression mechanic whereas whenever you are encountering an alien the hive will then quote-unquote start a hunt where they are going to your last location if you haven't moved away and will continue to encounter aliens, that hunt will continue to exist. And whilst the hunt exists, the alien hive's aggression starts. It starts with none, then goes from easy to medium to hard. And uh, with every little step of alien aggression, the bravery of your soldiers goes down, so they take more stress, and the number of aliens goes up, as well as the number of patrols, which in turn makes it even uh, less likely that you stay under the radar and you will trigger more and more waves. So in other words, uh, that is a game design to the power of four because there are four influence factors that all multiplicatively with each other make it more difficult for you that once you have entered combat a vicious cycle begins to erupt where you will suffer more and more penalties until the point where you need to extract. Now, you can either go down that route and embrace it and fully say, okay, I'll just do a couple of fights and uh, go out of uh, here. Great, however, 
The game also has a doom timer as a standard default measure, which means you cannot uh, um, uh, deploy an unlimited amount of times onto the same map unless you want to lose the game. So the by far, not even closely comparable, more effective way of playing this game is to simply avoid combat under all costs, which means instead of all of the 25 uh, nice items that the game offers you in order to fight the aliens, you reduce it to a motion tracker that you can overload in order to distract the aliens, a silenced sniper that you can use in order to kill the aliens without any retaliation, and a lot of mines that you can place so that the aliens stupidly run into them and essentially get blown into smithereens. But for whatever reason, that does not trigger hive aggression. Make it make sense, the game at least says these are the stealth measures and you are going to use them and them only in 95% of the time. The problem with that is it creates a loop of oversimplified gameplay where you're just trying to avoid detection over and over again and the fun part is somewhat hidden behind the wall of penalties and you really don't want to trigger that because you have the choice of either being successful or having fun and that's really not a good game design so the reason why I'm giving it 4 out of 10 which is below average is because I do fully understand that there is an audience for that type of gameplay and that it kind of resonates with the alien environment where, where you're not going in guns blazing. I get that, but it is also a game. And a game should, first and foremost, be entertaining and fun. And there is a bit of suspension of disbelief. Can there be marines that are well enough equipped to handle large amounts of aliens? Absolutely, no problem at all. And mind you, there are some missions in the game without going into spoilers, where even the standard game allows you to just go guns blazing and it is part of it. So if the narrative already includes parts of that, why wouldn't you make the game more around that? There could have been plenty of options uh, to salvage that. You could have split the campaign into different missions where some are stealthy and some are guns blazing. You could have asked the player if they want to play it in one way or the other. And please, let's not start with the option that there will be mod support that fixes this issue. For me, it's a very corner piece of the game where I think that the developers actually fumbled the ball and made a fantastic game into a more average one, which is why I ended up giving it a four out of 10. If you are a tactic squad gamer and you want that kind of gameplay, I do not recommend you buying this game because I think your uh, expectations will not only be subverted, but actually will be shattered. If you like roguelike gameplays and if you enjoy avoiding a threat, if you like tension and kind of the horror appeal to it, then the game is absolutely for you. And in that case, I would give the gameplay potentially a seven, respectively, maybe even an eight out of 10. But since it is a one out of 10 for one uh, gamer group and an eight out of 10 for the other gamer group, I sort of uh, landed in the middle of it knowing farewell that it will not suit everyone. All right, next up, replayability. I think the game does a decent job of making it replayable. Your character design has random elements in it, which sort of motivates you to kind of try again. I'm maybe not the biggest fan of a limited class selection, so whenever you level your soldiers, you only have a selection between two classes, but it's not that bad. Um, because you will get enough Marines to eventually get whatever team you want. So those things aside, the game itself with its hand-picked assets and a good map design actually makes a lot of sense and is great to be played through the first time. However, as any storyline-driven game that uh, you have played nowadays, it is a bit of a fall off after the second time that you are playing the game. Mostly because you have seen uh, the maps, the learning curve is quite steep on that. Once you know where the hidden um, uh, treasures and secrets are, it actually becomes a bit easier. And quite frankly, most of the maps, since they are static instead of dynamic, uh, fall a bit short. I do fully understand one of uh, my viewers had commented on a previous review that dynamic map management is a very difficult endeavor and I agree with that. Yet if you do have games like XCOM or other strategy games where they are 
either more maps available or where the maps themselves are dynamic, I cannot just accept uh, static maps and not say it is average. It is good for what it's trying to do, but as any single player game, it needs to really up the ante a little bit and find ways of making it interesting for a second or third playthrough. This game doesn't necessarily do it. There are a couple of achievements in here which you can hunt, but quite frankly, most of them you can get in the first run anyways, if you are willing to, uh, to take on the time. And there isn't enough depth in terms of character classes or alternative approaches to the game to actually make it way more replayable. So all likelihood, you will play the game once, you will have a good time with it, but that's likely it, unless you are an absolute enthusiast. So let me invite you into the final review. We're totaling a solid 7 out of 10 for the game. The game has a clear profile of strengths and weaknesses. And the question is Aliens Dark Descent worth your time and money it really depends on where you land on all of the different points. It is an incredibly well adaptive lore and background game with a good storyline if you like movie like games. I was trying to not spoil as much from the actual storyline so that you can enjoy the game in its entirety. You could equally just look through all of the cutscenes on YouTube, have a two hours nice movie-esque experience and skip the entire gameplay. Which brings me nicely to the however parts. If you are in for tactical gameplay, if you like deep puzzle-like games, even turn-based gameplay and deep mechanical interactions with uh, the uh, computer, then this game is unfortunately not fully delivering. The lack of quality AI, which oftentimes is stupid, the many uh, bugs that are still in the game, just frankly the misrepresentation of it not being a tactical game, but rather a stealth roguelike game, did not fully sit well with me so that is the however part if you can overlook these particular things you will be in for a treat both graphically as well as from the sound perspective and if you don't mind purchasing a game that you play once and then leave behind then alien dark descent is definitely for you i can full-heartedly say it is a game that i can recommend with an asterisk and the asterisk is you need to be the right type of player that enjoys these kinds of games. This will be a divisive game and also a divisive review. As some of you will be highly anticipating and appreciating the game, whilst others, after what I've said, might not be as kind to the game. And that is potentially the nature of Alien Dark Descent. It divides people into those who like the game and those who better stay away from it. I enjoyed my one playthrough, but I can tell you one was enough for me and I wouldn't necessarily go back to the game. Thanks a lot uh, for watching. If you agree with the review, leave a comment down below. What was your thought uh, of the game and how did you enjoy it? Take care and let me know what you think. Bye bye.